Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. Today, we have a simple trash to treasure project using this detergent container. Then we'll use fabric and doilies and lace and paper to create some shabby sweetness that I just know you're gonna love. Well, there is lots of fun in store today, so let's get these projects started. Your Cascade containers come in two different sizes. I'm gonna be using this one today in my project because I have a specific goal in mind for this one. But I think once I finish with all of the product that's inside here, I think this is the perfect size to use as like a little garbage can on my craft table. And you can just pop this out right here. That just takes the lid right off for you. I'm not gonna bother with trying to remove this label you can use either fabric or you can use scrapbooking paper to cover these. This is super shiny. So I'm gonna just take some fine grit sandpaper and just rough that up just to give my Mod Podge some tooth to be able to adhere my fabric. And I'm just gonna take a wet wipe and wipe down the surface so I measured and cut a strip that is going to completely cover my container here, but it's also going to overlap just a little bit in the back. And I've also cut it just a little longer than I need to give me a little bit of wiggle room as I am gluing this on. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Mod Podge on my brush here. And because I'm using fabric, I do add a little more of that Mod Podge than I would if I were using paper. And I'm gonna start in the middle and smooth it down. And you can use a brayer to make sure you're rubbing that in and all that glue is adhering well without any of the wrinkles or bubbles. Or you could also use a piece of cardboard to just smooth that right out. So I'm going to follow that same process and cover and glue my fabric to the remaining parts of my container. Now to take care of our excess fabric down here, I came in and I made little snips in my fabric just on these four curved areas. That way when we apply our Mod Podge, it's gonna lie flat and it's not gonna bunch up right here. I'm gonna come in and add Mod Podge onto the little plastic container area and add it on the fabric as well. So then when we press that down, it's all nice and smooth and it's not bunched up. And now we're gonna come back over all of these edges and smooth all of that down. And I think that is looking cute already. So I cut a piece of this lace to go all the way around. However, I think this is just a little long. So I am gonna take my scissors and just cut right along this edge here, just to eliminate some of this area that's kind of covering up my little rose design. And of course, this goes into my shabby scrap pile that can be used for other projects. It has this perfect little ledge right there, and that's where I'm going to be adding my hot glue. I've got my glue gun on low, so I'm not gonna melt the plastic container or my lace. And then working in small sections, I'm just gonna add a little bead of glue and put in my lace. And I'm gonna glue that down all the way around my little container here. And that looks absolutely adorable. Now I have a lot of my lace in this glass jar just wrapped around giant craft sticks. But if you don't have a glass jar, you could put them in this container that would hold those for you perfectly. But I am going to be putting all of my Prima Design decor molds in there. All of my Prima fit in there absolutely perfectly. And then I'm also going to put in some of my little smaller stamps that I ordered from Amazon. I think this is a great way to just corral some of those pieces and keep them all in one compact space ready to use the next time you want to craft. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For our next project, we are gonna be having some shabby, scrappy fun. We are going to take file folders and we're gonna make this sweet little fabric folder 
And we're also going to be making little tags and bookmarks to go inside of that as we place our little pockets in. I'm not sure if we've got time to make the paper pad yet. If we do, I'll do that. If not, we'll make the paper pad in another video. I have two of them that I'm working on. I have already started but I haven't put any pockets on the inside, so we're going to do that together since our cover is dry. And then we're also going to do some bookmarks and some little hang tags that we're going to put in those pockets as well. With this fabric, I'm going to show you how to apply your cover to your file folder. And then while the glue is drying on this, we will continue working in our beautiful twall folder. Isn't that fabric just glorious? I picked up this beautiful fabric at Hobby Lobby and it's got little roses and teapots and teacups, just everything that I think is just so sweet for spring. And to begin with, I take my file folder and I'm going to fold it in half because this is going to be my front and I just run it along my fabric until I decide on an image that I want to center up on the front. I open up my file folder and then I cut about an inch all the way around just to make sure I've got enough fabric to cover my folder. I'm going to use Mod Podge to glue my fabric to my file folder. Then I go in and I stitch and trim off the excess. If you do not want to stitch your file folder, you would just glue all of your pieces on like that. And I'm gonna take some paper clips to see if I like the placement before I glue anything down. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna turn it face down and I am going to apply a generous coat to my file folder here. Now I can go ahead and take these paper clips off and begin working this down. I do like to use a brayer to run that over the top of my fabric just to make sure I've got good adhesion. Then I'm going to turn this around, pull it back just a little past where I put that Mod Podge and apply a generous coat of our Mod Podge to our file folder. And do the same thing. Making sure that you don't have any bubbles or wrinkles in your fabric. And you'll see it does kind of cup a little bit. That's normal. And then take a wet wipe and clean up this excess Mod Podge off of my mat so then we can do the other side. For the inside, I am using some drop cloth fabric and I'm going to spread this out, make sure I've got enough overlap everywhere. Roll it back past the crease here. Now since I am going to be sewing mine, I am going to be careful not to get Mod Podge all around the outside edges because I don't want that to gum up my sewing machine. But I am still going to apply a generous coat. And then you're going to lift up and do the same thing to this side as well. I'm not going to stitch it. I'm not going to fold it. I'm not doing anything to this until it dries. And I am going to put it on this rack here so I can get air all up underneath it. So while this is drying, we can go ahead and move on to our twall folder. We're going to be using several different types of glue in our project today. And I am using my fine tipped hot glue gun. I'm also using some art glitter glue, and I'm also going to use some Aline's Tacky Glue. I keep it upside down, that way it's always ready to go. So to add texture and interest to our plain papers and our plain fabrics, I enjoy just stamping all kinds of different designs just to have some nice background to work with. But if you don't have any stamps, Look how awesome that looks. And that is just stamped cardboard that gives you just that nice shabby background 
for you to start gluing on your laces and fabrics and such just so it adds a little bit of interest to our plain file folders. And then I always like to pull out just some scrappy bits that I know I'm going to be using that are going to be nice and neutral for this project. And I do want to use this fabric to do a pocket here. And then I think I'm going to also do a crocheted pocket as well. So I'm going to fold that over so I can see how large I want my pocket. I think that's going to look good. So I can crease it with my fingers so I'll know where to cut. So I have cut out the fabric for my first pocket. I have turned all of that under and I'm going to go to the machine and stitch this down, but you do not have to do this step. You can turn your ends under and glue them, or you can take some pinking shears and just cut those edges so it won't unravel and glue that pocket straight down just like that. So after stitching, that's what it looks like. And I think that just gives it such a nice finished look. And I'm going to use my tacky glue this time. Run that along, making sure I get enough glue at the corners. And I just do one section at a time. All of our stuff's going to fit in there quite nicely. So far, so cute. And for my second little pocket, I can't have those tags catching on that doily. I've decided I'm going to back it with more of this fabric because it's just so pretty. And I'm going to cut around the edges, leaving enough for me to turn those edges under. And when you crease it, you can see those fold lines really well. And I'm just going to use more of my tacky glue. And now I'm going to take my little piece of doily here. And I do want that to kind of show up at the top a little bit. And then I'll just be pulling back the doily, putting little dots of hot glue on there and pressing it down. And so I'm going to glue around all four edges. I'm not going to put any glue in the middle of this because there's no reason to. And I'm going to hot glue this into place. So now let's focus on making some bookmarks and some hang tags. Books come in all shapes and sizes, so that means that your bookmarks can also vary in shape and size as well. This one is seven and a half inches long, and it's more of my file folder that I stamped with my music stamp. And then I glued on some drop cloth fabric to the front of that, and I stamped it with the music stamp as well. And I'll link that below. It came from Amazon. And then I just finished it off with some more of that doily and also some little strips of book page as well. And they really look so nice to be able to give as gifts. So these are going to be the backs of my various little hang tags and bookmarks, just like I have done on the backs of these. So any edges where you like that torn appearance, you just go ahead and tear those edges and you decide how shabby or how nice and straight you want your edges to be. And I just love those little sheep. They're just so cute. So I want that to be the focal point of this bookmark. And I'm just going to glue it down like it is. And then once the glue is dry, we can come back and cut all of that excess fabric off. And then while this is drying, we can move on to make one of our tags. And I always take a second just to wipe up that excess Mod Podge. And for this little tag, I want to make a little ruffle at the bottom. And I'm going to take a needle and thread, and I'm just going to do a running stitch. And you literally just go in and out the entire length of your fabric. And then when we reach the end, we're just going to gather up our little ruffle here. And before we tie it off, adjust those gathers to the width of our little tag here. And that looks good to me. Now I can just tie a knot and clip my threads. I had intended for this to be the back, but I like that so much, I actually want that to be the front. And glue that down like that. I think that is going to be just gorgeous. Let's see what I got here. And then I'm just going to start layering on things that I think are going to look cute. I like that little asymmetrical look there. And there is no right or wrong way to do these. You just take your scraps and start gluing them down. 
I've got these nice little scraps here, so I think I'll add those to the back. And then I'm going to glue that down just so it looks as cute from the back as it does from the front. Okay, and then we'll let that dry, and now we can come back to our bookmark. And now I'm going to take my pinking shears and just trim off the excess. So I like this trim right there. I think that's cute, so I'm going to glue that down there. And then these are just pieces of really tatty looking cheesecloth. And then I'm going to glue in another little piece of my doily right there. I think that is going to be really cute. And I think that looks so pretty. And I did go back with my brown ink. This is the archival ink in the color coffee. And I just inked up those edges. You can ink your fabric as well as your paper and it looks great. And just gives it a nice kind of vintagey look, but it also finishes off those edges really well too. Look how good it looks on that doily. And it just looks so nice just to get all of this filled in here. I'll do a couple more tags just to get that filled up as well. How cute is that? What I intended to be the back of my cards, I actually really like them for the front. So I'm going to leave them as they are, but I'm going to glue them so this is what the back will look like. But before I glue these down, I am going to take a little bit of some fine grit sandpaper just to kind of get off that shine. <laughs> And you want to wipe up that excess dust. And I'm going to use my art glitter glue this time so I can really cover this surface. And then we can just go ahead and cut these out. And then we're left with these little yummy looking pieces here. And then we've got scraps that we can use for other projects too. I used my corner round punch to go ahead and round off those edges. I still am going to take my ink and go around those edges because I just like how that looks. And I think this little piece here fills in that space quite nicely. So I'll glue that down. And then I liked this little section down at the bottom just like that. And now these sweet little simple ones are done here as well. How cute is that? And we can get them tucked into our little folder here. And everything just looks so nice and pretty and coordinated. I just love that. Well, let's go ahead and get started on our cute little teapot folder. So, of course, I decided I was going to keep this palette fairly neutral for this little folder, but you know, you're not getting out of one of my videos without some pink. So, I have pulled out a lot of fun pink things that I may use. That way, it's just close at hand whatever I decide to do. Once my folder here dried, I went back and did some zigzag stitches in pink, and then I trimmed off the excess using my pinking shears to avoid any additional fraying. Also, we're going to be bending and folding our folder, and you want to make sure that you do this when it's dry. Kind of get it started, and then I'm going to line up my edges and make sure everything looks nice and straight. And then I can take my bone folder and really emphasize that crease. Now let's have some fun on the inside. Because this folder is smaller than our previous folder, I've cut fabric here and I'm going to add a pocket on either side so I can have one for my tags and one for my bookmarks and they're not going to crowd each other out. And I'm just going to use my art glitter glue and glue down each of my pockets. And since I'm not folding anything under, I always want to make sure I press that glue down really well so I don't have a ridge of a glue line there. And I am going to use these for the back, so I've got some nice fabric scraps here. And then we'll come back and get this fabric trimmed up after all of our Mod Podge has dried, but then we can move on to other little tags and bookmarks as well. So I've decided I want some torn edges on my little tag here. And then I've just got some scraps of scrapbooking paper that I've also torn those edges. And now I'm going to take my ink and ink all of those edges up before I start layering them down onto my little tag. 
I like that. So I'm going to take my art glitter glue and glue all of that down. And I think those little layers look quite nice. A little pink flower for some color and some of the rickrack is really cute. And that's really sweet. And that's the back. These just turn out so very cute. Now we've got our first little tag we can put in our folder here. That's so sweet. I love it. And these are dry, so now we can trim off the excess fabric. This little jewel is so adorable, and it's got some really dark stains in here that just would not come out. And I think that that is going to be really cute glued onto our little bookmark here. That is so sweet. And I love it when I find things at the thrift store that look like something my mom would have made. I know she would have loved that. I like this over here to kind of balance that edge. I like this little eyelet trim down here. I may put some more of this down here too. So I decided I did want some of that at the bottom. That is so cute. And then I tied a knot in some lace and glued that to the back so I'd have a nice little handle there. And that way it looks nice from the front or the back. And because I am tucking these into pockets, that's why I like backing them with file folders. That is looking really cute. And then for this little tag, I like this little piece of scrap doily there. And I wanted to see how big I wanted my bow before I cut off that piece of my crinkled seam binding. That way I don't waste it. And a little button. I think that looks really sweet. And I am going to stitch my button onto my bow because sometimes when you just glue things on, things like buttons can just pop off. So I'm just stitching that to the center of the bow. And it only takes a couple of stitches just to hold it in place. So that way, when we start gluing everything down, it's got a secure base and it's not going to pop off. Super, super cute. Very sweet. Tuck it in there. Adorable. And for our remaining tags and bookmarks, the backs of these have been stamped as well. And for my bookmarks on the front, I'm going to be using this decoupage paper that I picked up from Kimberly at My Victorian Heart. And I will link her shop below. But I am going to rip off this edge right here. So now that I have all of that excess removed from there, I can see where I want to place my little image here. I'm gonna just fold it over. And then I'm gonna tear along my fold line so now I have two beautiful images that I can decoupage onto the front of my little bookmarks here. And because we're using paper, you're not going to need a very thick coat. So that is just going to be gorgeous. I love these and we'll let these dry and then we'll start working on our tags. And I want the tops of all of these to have a tag shape and you can draw out a tag shape that you can use as a template, but I'm going to use my tag punch that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. You just pop it in there and it makes that gorgeous shape at the top. So I've taken some of those cute little images from my fabric and just fussy cut around those. And then I had some scrapbooking paper that had musical notes on it. And I'll be gluing those to the front and then layering on my little pieces because I really like how that looks. And I love these little layered images. I think they look really, really nice. So we're going to give a few minutes for our glue to thoroughly dry and then we'll come back and get embellishments on all of our pieces here. Because the video is starting to get really long, I'm gonna finish these off camera using some book pages, parts of our doily, ribbon, things of that sort. And then I'll come back and show you what I've done to them. And I really want to show all of these little beautiful items in our completed book. And here are the finished pieces. And you can see bits of doily and lace and ribbon. Behind that doily, I put some scrapbooking paper with the musical notes on there. And I always like to finish off the back as well. And then this one, book pages on one side, 
the scrapbooking paper with the musical notes on the other. And again, I love using up the rest of my doily. And then all of these have been inked with my archival ink all around the edges. But on these, I actually took my dark wax and a small brush just to kind of shadow those images out, add some depth to those little images, and I loved that. And I love those cute little pink rhinestones on there. And I'm actually gonna put some on this one and show you how I used my rhinestone tool. More cute little pink rhinestones on this one. And some more ribbon here. And I just took some scraps and I stitched on a button and then glued that down. And I just think they turned out so, so cute. And let me show you my pink rhinestone kit. You take this off and it has a wax tip on the end there. And it comes with various sizes of your pink rhinestones. And you can get whatever color, but of course I want pink. So I'm gonna put just a dot of my art glitter glue in the middle. Take my little tool and you pick it up from the pink side and it holds it for you. So then you can just place it down in the glue just like that. I was having trouble holding on to small items like rhinestones and I just found this makes quick work of my rhinestone placement. And this glue dries clear so you're not going to see any of that glue once everything is dry. Isn't that just so sweet and simple? I love that. And then we can place all of our items in our beautiful little folder. I'm going to fold that ribbon under. I'm just so thrilled with how all of this turned out. It's so, so beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to do these beautiful folders with our bookmarks and our hang tags. And then because the video is running long, I will teach you how to do a little notebook on a later video. But for now, I just need to get all of this styled up and give you a closer look at how beautiful all of our projects turned out.
you so much for joining me today. It has been my pleasure to craft with you. Please subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next time, my sweet friends, be blessed.